Welcome back to Fortnite Tales. This is Team Alindal, where we play Fortnite and we just talk about stuff. We're continuing our discussion of the early American history. In the previous episode, we talked about the conflict between religion and liberty. Uh, in the 1640s, almost all of the leaders in New England tried to tackle this tricky topic. <laughs> One example is Nathan Ward, a pastor in Ipswich. He wrote, let me see, I have this here. I dare take it upon me to be herald of New England so far as to proclaim to the world, in the name of our colony, that all familiasts, Antoninians, Anabaptists, and other enthusiasts shall have free liberty to keep away from us. And such will come to be gone as fast as they can, the sooner the better. I dare say that. God does nowhere in his world tolerate Christian states to give toleration to such adversaries of his truth, if they have the power in their hands to suppress them. Apparently he was not very open to diversity of religion in the colony. In fact, he was basically calling for the government to squash anything that was different. <laughs> this is the problem when religion splinters into multiple different paths. While the main goal is the same, everyone seemed to have their own path to get there. Most of these religions could be placed into one of four categories. And speaking of where we're going to go, we'll go to our house. Uh, the Philomelists he talked about were lovers of truth. They wanted all religions to join in some great fellowship of peace. The Anabaptists were a radical Protestant movement. Quakers, the Mennonites, the modern-day Baptists, whose primary tenet was adult baptism. Uh, they believed the believers would rebaptize as adults, which was considered a crime at the time by the more orthodox believers. Okay, what are we doing? Let's come in here. What kind of weapons do we have for ourselves? That is a shield keg, which is not a weapon. Is there a weapon over here? See a weapon. Um, okay, let's get some shields. There's got to be a weapon in here. There There's minis. Um, I need a weapon. Uh, I need a weapon. Right, let's try over here. This is not good. I'm so dead. I am so dead. Uh, that is a shock ammo. Shockwave. Really? Is there a weapon in here? No. Okay, well, let's get some shields. Um, well, we got shields and we got minis and shockwave. Um, and there's people everywhere. Uh, let's try another building. Let's try this one over here. Oh, come on. I still can't believe I don't have a weapon. I'm so dead. Get in here. There's gotta be a weapon. I see a weapon. Let's go. Weapon, weapon, yes, weapons. Okay, I got a weapon. That's good. Some slap juice. Let's go ahead and slap in some slap juice. And we get a shotgun. Let's go. I'm here for this. Okay, so we have SMG. Let's go ahead and pick up the slap juice. There's fighting. Let's go get in this fighting. The Antimeniums were a religious group who believed in a covenant of grace versus a covenant of works. The covenant of grace proclaimed it didn't matter what you did as long as you believed in God and you would gain God's covenant. I didn't see anything over there. I'm just going to come on back here and continue looting. <laughs> see if there's a... There's got to be a, like the... Oathbreaker chest up here. Uh, the covenant of works proclaimed that if you gain God's covenant by doing good works, uh, the covenant of works was the primary belief of the Orthodox colonists who were the majority of colonists of evil, really. Well, we get a pot. The Orthodox believed sinning was bad and should be punished, while the other side believed. Uh, it's supposed to be. The other side believed that sins weren't always punishable offenses. Let's go ahead and grab this pistol. And were forgivable as long as the person had a belief in God. Forgiveness was kind of an important staple of grace. They tend to believe, ooh, a hammer, let's go. They believed that many of the laws were unnecessary and something that didn't have to be followed. As you can see, 
these two beliefs might clash a little and create a division within the colonial leadership. <laughs> Uh, on July 3rd, 1645, John Winthrop spoke on the vexing question of authority of the magistrates and liberty of the people. He laid out a justification for a more orthodox approach to governing. Let's see what's down here. A liberty to that only which is good, just, and honest. Ooh, splashes. This liberty is maintained and exercised in a way of subjection to authority. It is of the same kind of liberty whereof Christ hath made us free. Uh, no, there they are. Uh, not the pot. Okay, I hear some people fighting. Let's see if we can get in over here. Where are they? Come on, let's fight. Okay, hit. There's still fighting up here. Let's get in on this. Where are they? Right there. Dude, he's still my kill. Okay, let's get shotgun. Um, I'm... Um, Okay, shotgun. There they are. Oh. Right, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm so dead. <gasps> One health! Are you kidding me? One health. He had a better shotgun. Oh. How did I live through that? I got six chests. Um, um, I need health. I need health. Oh. Let's see if we can save these splashes. I got 51. Oh, big pot. Oh my goodness. Lifesaver, big pot. Okay, let's drown this. Holy cow. I I really don't know how I lived through that, but I will take the burst. He had much better weapons than me. I don't know. I guess I did more damage with that first shotgun shot. I don't know. He may have taken some... He probably took that damage I maybe from earlier was the difference. Holy cow. Oh, no, I don't need heals. Okay, we're at... Uh, uh, I have some... Man, I hope no one shows up. I'd really like to be able to save these splashes if I can. Uh, there's nothing here. Okay, what's over here? Oh. That would be... Keg. Let's grab the keg. Let's get in here and let's get our shields up. To 100. Is that fruit? Uh, it's already open. Great. Could really use some health here, but... Um, sure. <laughs> No health for us. Well, let's we get some more splashes. Um, meat, meat, meat. Oh, yes, let's eat some meat. Okay. We're back almost near full health. I like it. We gotta get out of here. Though. Okay. some more Did someone shoot at us uh, they're up there they just went in okay let's keep moving run 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 <laughs> okay we've survived the early game always gotta like that <sighs> and oh look at this I didn't know there was one here that's pretty cool more splashes. Oh, we can use a couple splashes here. And pick up those. Okay, we got six splashes. Somehow we made it to 200 health and we maintained our splashes. Excalibur. No. Okay, let's just chill here for a second. Oh, mythic munition. Let's flip and go. A liberty to that only which is good and just and honest, this liberty is maintained and exercised in a way of subjection to authority. It is of the same kind of liberty whereof Christ hath made us free. If you stand for your natural corrupt liberties 
and you will do what is good in your own eyes. Let's keep going here. You will not endure the least weight of authority, but if you will be satisfied to enjoy chest in here, such civil liber and lawful liberties as Christ allows, then you will quietly and cheerfully submit under the authority which is set over you for your own good. <laughs> Let's summarize real quick. If you only believe that what is you think is right, then you are being selfish. You are standing for liberties that not only will corrupt your soul, but make you ungovernable. Oh, look, somebody's here. Oh, look, two people are fighting. Let's get involved in this fight. Okay. Reload. Dead. Who's the next one up here? Hiding behind trees. How does that not hit him? There we go. Oh, you're dead. How are you not dead? Let's get him. I don't know how he's not dead. He should be dead. Let's try the pistol out. Oh, that does some work. Let's go. <laughs> Holy cow, I like it. But if you want to enjoy the liberties that God offer that does not corrupt your soul... Oh, these are terrible. Let's re-roll. Pistol lamp, let's go. Then you will happily submit to the authority of government. Why wouldn't you want to submit to a government where the leaders are selected based upon their good works? I mean, they will naturally work for the best interest of the colony. They will only have the greater good at the forefront of their minds. I mean, it's a perfect solution to governing colonies. Well, you know, it's good in theory, but practice didn't always work that well, as you will see in the career of John Winthrop. Winthrop was a political and religious leader of the colony. Let's see where we got to go first before I get into Winthrop. Let's go to the, down to this dead side over here. It didn't always work out as well as we'll see in the career of John Winthrop. Winthrop was a political and religious leader of the colony who encapsulates this early period of colonial governance. Winthrop had a natural charisma, which is how, why he was picked to be governor to begin with. His governance, on the other hand, was harsh. In effect, it was an orthodox theocracy run by these godly men of the colony. In effect, Winthrop ran a dictatorship. Everyone had to swear an oath of loyalty to his government. He was ruthless when dealing with dissent, or he saw as anti-social behavior. For example, he burned down Thomas Morton's house and kept him in stocks until he could be shipped home. His crime? Erecting a maypole and reveling. Let's make sure we get into the storm here. Philip Radcliffe was whipped and had his ears cut off for, in the words of Winthrop, uh, conversation most foul, scandalous, invective is against our church and government. Uh, Sir Christus Gardner was banished for bigamy and papism. So yeah, let's try this out. Purple scar out. What the heck? Okay. Well, it hit. <laughs> Where's that guy going? Okay. What the heck is going on over there? Let's go ahead and grab the burst again. I prefer the burst. Oh yeah. Much better. Look at that. Oh, he's so low. <sighs> Let's get into the circle. But his stern and brutal leadership led many of the strong-minded, and there were many of these in the colony, to feel maybe he exceeded his authority a little bit. Winthrop was doing what he thought was best for himself rather than maybe what was good for the people. Uh, he obliged all the colonists to swear that loyalty, but he himself didn't always follow the rules. He was supposed to call a general court four times a year, but he only did it once. Hmm. 
maybe because he didn't want to have to deal with all these people. <laughs> After four years of living under his quote-unquote tyranny, many colonists demanded he show them the charter. He reluctantly did so and was found to have acted ultra vice or beyond his authority. Uh, regardless of religion, though, the colonists brought with them from England a sense of the rule of law. They were interested in laws and not necessarily powerful men. This is one of the primary reasons for them leaving England in the first place. The colonists had been promised all the rights of an Englishman, and they were going to enforce it. They believed that Winthrop had deprived them of the rights, and such they deposed him at the next general meeting. The colony, which was made up of representative body from each village, some shooting going on over here. Uh, confirmed his dismissal and replaced him with Thomas Dudley in 1634. What the heck is this? <laughs> what am I watching? At least he didn't try to run me over. What is going on? Is he going to come after me? I'm kind of in the low ground. This is not the spot to be. Okay, he's gonna come back down. What is going on? That's crazy. What the heck is going on? Okay, we're gonna shoot. Oh, look! What a shot! I'm alive. What a shot! Okay, let's heal up here. Good thing we saved the splashes. Um, okay, he's got a better shotgun than me. Let's go ahead and grab that shotgun. Okay. That was cool. I don't really want that. <laughs> Holy cow! That was crazy. Pistol did some work there, man. I'm not gonna lie. But the removal of Winthrop from office was actually the first coup in American history. And what was different about this than history throughout the world so much was that it was carried out without a gunshot. Instead, it was carried out with words, arguments, the rule of law. That is a unique thing in the history of man at this, up to this point. Is there any better weapon over here? What is going on over there? Oh, somebody died. Something right there. Okay, let's come up here and get the high ground. Okay. Guys down here. Wait, this is the last guy. Let's go! I won! Yes! <laughs> GG, dude. GG. Holy cow, we got a victory! A victory royale! Let's go! Wow. I, and I think, you know, the fact that this was done without gunshots is importance for the future of the colony and kind of gives us a direction for where we're going as a country. We'll see in future episodes a little bit more about Winthrop's life, but this is a good start for the colony. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe. And as always, have a great day if you want to.